welcome to Tips and Tricks. Today we're going to install Windows on a Mac. And this will be Windows 10 that we're installing on the Mac. And there's a way to actually to install it uh, fully for free and run it on your Mac fully for free using the Apple Bootcamp. So we're gonna run through the whole scenario how to do that uh, from start to finish. So the first thing is to get a copy of Windows. Uh, the best bet really these days is Windows 10. Uh, you can run Windows 7 on here, uh, but um, you'll need to have a product key for Windows 7. Um, if you have an old PC or, an, or a, a disk with Windows 7 with the product key on there, uh, this will definitely work. So I'll leave a link in the description on where to download the disk image for Windows 7. Uh, but during the installation process, which is similar to this, you'll have to enter a product key, so you have to be ready for that. With Windows 10, Microsoft has sort of relaxed things a little bit, so you can actually run it in a um, unactivated version, uh, which just gives you a couple of small cosmetic um, restrictions, such as not being able to change the background, but as a fully functioning version of Windows that you'll be able to use for the foreseeable future. So let's get started. Uh, I've also put a link in the description on where to download the uh, image file for Windows, but I'm just gonna paste it in here. So if you just go to that URL that I put in the description, then you'll get to this page here. So here, you just scroll down, pop up the edition you want. You're gonna want Windows 10, hit confirm. Great, and pick your language. In this case, I'll pick international English. Confirm that. Great, and we want to do the 64-bit download. That's important. Uh, we need the 64-bit to run on the Mac. So make sure you select this first one here. And you'll see it'll start our download. So we can get a idea of how long the download is going to take. Now it's a big file. You see it's uh, almost five gigs in size. On my internet connection, it's going to take 30 minutes. So yours might vary. If you've got faster, it might be uh, a little less time, uh, but it could be a lot longer. So this process is gonna take a while. There's just no, no getting around that. Uh, the download can take a while. And then the installation process will take a little while too. So what I'm gonna do, just so you're not waiting forever in this video, is speed this up. But remember on your side, you're just gonna have to wait for the download to happen. Okay, so now we have our file downloaded. So we can see it appears in our downloads folder here. The best thing here is to uh, drag it onto the desktop. I'm just gonna drag it up here so it's ready. And we can quit Safari. Now that we have our Windows installer file fully downloaded and copied to our desktop, we are ready to install Windows on our Mac. So the first thing to do is to plug in a USB flash drive or a USB external hard drive. So I would make sure that the drive is at least 16 gigs in size and that will give enough room for the installer files to be fully copied to it so that it can actually launch itself and load itself onto, uh, onto Windows. Once the drive is on your desktop, we need to go to the Utilities folder. So if you don't know where the Utilities folder is, we just go here in a file and choose New Finder Window. Click here on Applications. Scroll up to the bottom of your Applications folder. There's another folder called Utilities. And from here, there's the Bootcamp Assistant software. So we'll launch this software and this is where we're gonna do everything to load Windows. Click on Continue. And here we have some options that are uh, required for loading Windows. Make sure they're all checked. Uh, the first one will actually create the installer disk on your USB drive. It's also going to download all the drivers that we need to run Windows on the Mac. And then the other one will actually allow us to choose Windows to be installed onto the Mac. Click continue. And you'll see it's 
picked up our installer image because it's on the desktop. If for some reason it doesn't find it, if you have it in a different location, you can always click choose here and then find it wherever it happens to be. Maybe even if it's still in your downloads folder, you could click it from there. And it shows the destination drive for all the installer files. So it's going to be the drive we called USB drive. And it's going to erase the drive. Uh, so make sure there's nothing on there that's important that you need uh, before you go ahead in this process. So a fresh new USB key, uh, USB flash drive is probably the, the best way to go. Uh, they're not very expensive, so I would just go out and buy one to use for this process. Click continue. It warns us the drive will be erased, that's fine. We'll click continue. So it's going to prepare this drive here and it's going to download all the files that it needs uh, from Apple for the drivers. And it is going to load all of the installer files that are contained here in the disk image that we downloaded from Microsoft and prepare all that for the installation. So I'm gonna let this run and I'm gonna speed it up on the video just so you're not waiting for it. Uh, however, this will take a while. So just prepare to, uh, to wait for it. Uh, it's gonna download some things over the internet, so that can take some time as well, depending on your internet connection. Uh, so make sure that you let this run all the way through. I don't think it should take more than an hour in most cases, but again, it depends on your internet connection. So our USB drive has been fully prepared. So the software is just asking for your Mac password. So it'll be your administrator password to continue with the installation process. So here we decide how much space do we want to give to Windows and how much do we want to have for Mac OS. And it really depends on what you're doing in Windows. If you're just going to be browsing the web a little bit, doing maybe a little bit of email, then you can choose a, a lower format. If you want to be doing gaming, you're going to want to increase it quite a bit. So you can slide the slider back and forth and it'll always sort of stop where it needs enough uh, space available for the, for the Mac side. And in this case, it's telling me how much space I'll have free on the Mac side. So in my case, I'm going to give it about uh, 100 gigs, 99 gigs, and we will let the installation proceed. So our drive has been partitioned and I'm switching now to camera mode so we can see the computer reboot and we can see the Windows installation process. It'll ask you for your password again. So just put that in. So now we're able to select our installation configurations. So you can choose what language you like. Great. So here we can choose our different uh, options. In this case, we've got International English, UK English. Uh, we're in Canada, so we're choosing the uh, Canadian options here. And keyboard input method being the US method. So we'll hit next. So here's where it's asking for the product key to activate Windows. So now we can actually choose, I don't have a product key. If you do have one, great. If you've gone out and purchased a new version of Windows, great. Uh, but this is a way to install it completely for free and it'll be fully functional with just some cosmetic issues around and limitations around putting in custom wallpaper. But other than that, it should be a fully functioning version of Windows. And here we choose the type of Windows that we want to install. Uh, we can choose Windows 10 Home or Windows 10 Pro and so on. Um, if you think you'll be upgrading later on to a paid version of Windows, I would choose Windows 10 Home uh, because the upgrade cost is less than Pro. Um, if you think you're going to be working with it uh, in the unactivated format long term, then you could choose Windows 10 Pro. Uh, in our case, I think we'll choose Windows 10 Home. It's all 64-bit uh, here, so we know it'll run fine on the Mac and we'll keep going. Here we can accept the license, click next. And here is where we choose the partition where it's going to install. So it should be clearly marked as it is here. 
we have our boot camp partition. Remember we made it about 100 gigs, it was 99 gigs on the Mac. It's uh, showing here as 92.3, but that way you can, you can tell which one it is. The rest will be the other internal storage for the Mac. And then this one, win install, is the external USB flash drive or USB drive that we used for the installation procedure. So you'll want to choose the bootcamp one. And from here, we'll need to format it so that it's ready to take uh, Windows onto it. So we know it's the correct one, so it's safe to hit OK. Great. So we also remember it was partition four. It's not going to have the boot camp name anymore, but we can see by the size it's the correct one. Now we're able to click next. And Windows will go through the installation procedure. This can take some time, just like all the downloading and so on. So I'm going to speed this up for the purposes of the video, but you'll just have to be patient and uh, work through this. So now we're ready to configure our region and our keyboard. You choose whatever suits you best. And here the software will ask to connect to a network. We actually need to install drivers to connect everything properly. So just click skip for now. You want to get to the desktop so we can install the Apple drivers. Now you're ready to set up your account. You can put in your name here and a password. And we set up our security questions. Just put in whatever question and answers make sense to you. And we can choose yes for Cortana. Great, now we can set up all the privacy settings. You can change all this afterwards, so you can accept them as they are if you just want to get going. Now we are in Windows and the next thing is to install the Apple drivers through the Bootcamp installer. We are now ready to install the Apple drivers that come with Bootcamp and we load it onto our external USB drive or USB flash drive. So the driver installer will come up automatically after the final reboot into Windows when Windows is fully loaded. So you just need to click on next. Accept the license agreement and then click install. This will just take a few minutes to install and then all the drivers should be prepared for your particular iMac or MacBook. The Apple driver has finished installing so we are able to click finish here now. And then it says we have to restart the computer before the changes make effect. That way all the drivers will load. So I'll click this and Windows will reboot once again. Great, now Windows is rebooted and everything should be ready. We're able to log in. Great, and then the driver, driver installation is now finalized and we are ready to use Windows. So from here you can set up your Wi-Fi, you can install software, you can install some games. It'll run just like the Windows that you're used to on any PC. So to configure your Wi-Fi, you can click on the Wi-Fi icon here, choose your Wi-Fi and enter the password. If you'd like to access the Apple Bootcamp 
configurations or restart into the Mac environment, click on this icon, choose the boot camp icon here, go restart in OS 10, or you can choose the boot camp control panel if you want to look at the settings there. So we'll let that make changes and then that way we can actually see some of the options. This is another way to, uh, to boot into the Mac side or the Windows side. You can also change your keyboard and trackpad options. If you want to always boot into the Mac side, you just click here and click OK. That will become the default. If you want the Windows side to be the default when your computer boots up, then you can click here and click Apply and OK. But for now, we're just going to boot straight into the Mac side. We can click on Boot Camp, restart in OS 10, and we should boot right back into the Apple side. We're on the Apple side. And on the Apple side, if you'd like to boot into the Windows side again, Open your system preferences, choose startup disk, you have to click on the lock here, and then you can choose to boot up into Windows. You click restart, boot back into Windows. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and I hope you're successful in loading Windows on your Mac and making it work. If you liked the video, uh, please hit the thumbs up and please subscribe and share the video too so more people can find it useful. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions on new videos that we can do, please put them in the comment area below.